You are now listening to the fastest show on iSports Radio. My name is Derek Kinsey Jr. Welcoming you to your lap of the extra mile for today, September 29th, 2022. Formula One is back, and Max Verstappen has his first crack at winning his second Formula One World Drivers Championship. Meanwhile, in the fight for the NASCAR Cup Series Championship, ain't nobody locked into Talladega, so chaos is afoot this weekend and help me talk about that of course my co-host michael ward michael welcome i should do that with you unmuted this time okay michael welcome hello hello (laughs) there we go good to hear from you again if you're in the chat make sure you drop your comments we'll read them on this show as we go along this evening exciting as we're now into the middle rounds or the chaos race as i call of the round of 12, or as you heard me last week, refer to it, the chaos round. Because we have <laughs> one sort of normal race in Texas. We'll get to that. And then we just have Talega, that's pure chaos. And the Roval, that's even more pure chaos. So That race was normal. I know, right? I mean, we'll get to that in a little bit. But before we go on... Of course, as you folks know, I am the lead commentator for the Saturday Night Hydroplane League. And with the real boat racing season starting to wind down with the championships decided in H1 Unlimited, which congratulations to the U1, Miss Home Street and driver Jimmy Shane picking up the win in both the National High Point standings in the driver and the boat. So the one will stay on the baby blue and white Miss Home Street. It's time for us to go virtual hydroplane racing. Saturday Night Hydroplane League is just nine days from getting started. And to help me preview just what is coming up with the game and what we are expecting this season is a good friend of mine that I've made over the last couple of years with the boat racing community. One of our board of directors in Saturday Night Hydroplane League and a driver in SNHL Division One, DJ Miller is with us to talk about the season. DJ, welcome to the show. Hi, Daryl. Thanks for having me. Well, we're glad to have you on here as well. If you've got any questions for DJ, boat-related, make sure you get them in the chat. We will read them out to him as we go. First, before we get into the SNHL season, I would say, how was your off-season? But it's kind of more of the, how was your real boat watch racing season? Because we got to see some great racing in H1, and there were some races out there in Seattle you guys got to see as well, or in Washington State you all got to see as well. Yeah, it was fairly hectic. I uh, I managed to make it out to Guntersville in Alabama early in the summer. Um, so that was a ton of fun. That was the third Gold Cup I've ever attended. Um, that, the Guntersville is just a, is a great race site to go to, as you've experienced in the past. Absolutely. Um, and then I made it out to Tri-Cities, which is always a blast, and got to meet a lot of uh, people that are pretty new to the game that I hadn't met before. Um, And the Seattle race was probably the highlight for me because I got to take, I got a, I had a couple friends that came out from the East coast who had never seen a boat before, but they wanted to see a race. So I brought them out to Seattle and they had a great time on Seafair Sunday. Well, you guys had a lot of fun this season. I, and you're right about, uh, how good Gunnersville is. I got to go there in 2021. It was a beautiful race site. Got to get back there. It looks like we may have some more boats out there for Gunnersville next season. Sounds like about eight or nine boats could be making the pull down there uh, next June if everything uh, goes right. Yeah, that's always the hope, uh, especially if in Gunnersville, the hometown boat can finally make an appearance again with the uh, Wiggins team. Yeah, I saw some pictures of that boat. They are getting worked on that. That boat got crashed a couple of years ago. They finally started to rebuild it, and hopefully it will uh, join the water with some of the unlimited stuff. Yeah, it needed a total rebuild. It's basically a new boat. Only the cockpit, I think, is original. Oof, that's... I don't think I ever remember... What actually happened in that accident? It, um... It just cracked the hull real bad. Like... Okay the whole midsection was just unusable and that that was the whole boat <laughs> yeah obviously that will not fly at all so let's get into 
the game Hydro Sim. A lot of work has gone into it with Scott Przybilski and the team. We just got 8.0 Beta 9 recently, and there have been some beautiful changes that have come to the Unlimited Hydroplanes, including the new cockpit module for the Unlimited Hydros. I haven't got a chance to look at it yet. Have you got a chance to look in it? Because from the pictures I've seen, it's absolutely beautiful. Oh, it's very cool. Um, it definitely helps the game feel more like a complete package of, hey, we finally have the in-cockpit cam that, you know, every racing sim ever has. Well, I mean, we had it, but now it looks all detailed and modeled and it looks very pretty. I especially love how the race pack uh, dash looks. And anytime I see race pack, I always think of hydroplane racing because that's how race pack got invented. So it's fun to <laughs> see that little logo in there because hydroplane driver Ron Armstrong was one of the inventors of it. It's nice to see it in the game. Also have a couple of new tracks and I will say we used to have a time in the game where we would go from the big one of the bigger tracks on the schedule to one of the most treacherous going from Gunnersville to Miami. Now this year we'll be starting the season at one of the largest circuits I think in the game at Chelan in Washington State and we'll be ending with the All-Star race at probably a racetrack that is completely unsuited for unlimited hydros which is Firebird Lake, which was basically an old drag racing lake that they've used, that they ran uh, Circle Track Hydros on a couple of times. Yeah, it's quite the contrast. But uh, one thing I love about Hydrosim is that we can race, uh, you know, on bodies of water that the Unlimited either don't race on anymore or just straight up, like, can't race on or shouldn't race on. Mm -hmm. uh, Lake Chelan is a historic course. The Unlimited's raced there back in 57. So I, we are using the 1957 race course layout, which was a three-mile course. Uh, back then, all the Unlimited courses were often very large. Three miles was the standard. And then Firebird uh, is tons of fun because you have to pull out some wacky setup just to get the thing to make the corners if you can make the corners uh, we're going to figure out we're going to see who can figure it out later on when we get into the all-star race but as i'm looking at our schedule here we do have some classic traps we've got chelan we've got miami that used to be on the unlimited schedule back in the day evansville that a lot of people are hoping we go back to racing to and of course I think we hear about this one about every other week. Uh, Detroit. DJ, I don't think I have to explain to you how much badly people want to go racing back in Detroit. And for the listeners that are probably don't know what this is, Detroit is basically the home of the Gold Cup. It's where the first Gold Cup was ran. We ran a lot of races there uh, over the years. Unfortunately, with COVID and some concerns with the boat counts, haven't been able to get back out to Detroit in the last few years. We have it here in the game. DJ, how important is it to have these tracks that don't exist anymore for folks to take a spin around? I think it's very important. And for me, as like a hydroplane history buff, it's incredibly cool. Um, mm -hmm. It's a, it's a, I think it shows one of the cool advantages of sim racing, which is it allows you to preserve racing history in a way we couldn't really before, you know, I racing did the whole North Wilkesboro scan thing, uh, which was also very cool. I mean, now it's kind of moot since like they're going back to North Wilkesboro for realsies, but definitely in the moment, it was very cool. And I, and I mean, I racing just, has the surfaces preserved of existing racetracks like prior to repaves, like they have the old Daytona on there and all that. Um, so that's kind of our equivalent of it is we have these old and historic race sites in Hydrosim, which is not only just more content for us video game players to enjoy, but for the Hydro history buffs, it's very fun to actually get to turn laps at these old race sites and just see what made them so unique yeah and we've got some more tracks coming you've got some australian tracks on the way we've got one in kopi hollow that is already in the game and we have some others on the way as well and some more of the 
Grand Prix tracks for the Grand Prix class that is now in the game as well as we now have uh, the Hydroplane Racing League, HRL having their winter virtual league as well. But let's get into our season coming up. We start next week, October 8th at Chelan. I really believe this is our biggest uh, Division Two field that we've had uh, in the three years that we've had Division Two. I think that just speaks to the health of the game and how the word of mouth is spreading because we've got a lot of interested parties and wanting to take part this year. Yeah, we currently have, I think we're either at or over 50 people signed up for division two plus the 24 that hold the division one slots. So we are over 70 people in the league, which is a lot. It's a lot of people for me to keep track of. Um, I just really like seeing like the diversity of people. Like there's obviously most of them are boat racing fans from across the country and even the world, but there's also just the occasional, like there's a few sim racers in there who just stumbled across the game that, you know, they come from like iRacing and all that. And they've never seen a boat in their life, but they enjoy a new challenge. There's people that are a bit more casual, just racing game fans. And again, they find the boat racing game and they're like, Hey, this is cool. Um, and then there's people like me who are just boat racing fans and have always wanted a video game since they were a little kid. And finally they have one and they end up stumbling across it. Now, I don't think we're going to get all 50 of those at one night. I hope not because uh, we're not going to get done anytime <laughs> soon. I'm not going to have a voice by the end of it, but you could have a situation where we could have about 26 to 30 every night at division two, depending on how people stick with it, that's going to make getting the points to make the top five, a heck of a lot harder than it used to be in the last couple of years, because it used to be, you know, we'd have our big field at the start. Then if you were just around for a vast majority of the races, you would get into that top five. But from what it looks like with the field that we're going to have, It's going to be required that if you're going to get in the top five, you got to be not only at all the races, but you're going to have to do well. Yeah, uh, it's going to be hard just to make the top 10 if enough people consistently show up for the all-star race invite. Um, Yeah, if you're going to make the top five in D2, you got to try your best to, I think minimum, you need to try your best to make every final heat. If you have a good enough race, every every event to make that final heat you should rack up enough points to get that top five and high points so if i was a d2 driver that would be my goal is just try to make every final and speaking of making every final division one which will get started in november this year so the first two races of the snhl season will be for division two and then division one will go for two straight weekends Y'all have a, uh, well, on H1, there's a blue and white boat that everyone's chasing. For y'all, it's a blue and yellow boat that you're chasing. Eddie Canfush wins the championship last year, second straight year. How do you go about chasing down that U1 as we get ready for Schlan in just about a month's time? I think I just, I for me personally, I just keep doing what I'm doing because there's one other person that has a division one high point championship and that's me. <laughs> <laughs> so me and Eddie have kind of been like the top two dogs that everybody else has been chasing. And we just sort of have had fun throughout the whole thing. Um, he's more, he's more consistent than I am, but I mean, that's fine. <laughs> I've always found it to be tons of fun and a privilege to race alongside him. And we've had lots of really cool and close battles. And it's, I'm also just super proud of him to finally see him behind the wheel of a real boat and winning real races because yes. I'll, I'll probably never do that. <laughs> um, I think we were all glued to the SNA or not the SNA, the HRL streams and the updates trying to see how Eddie was doing out there. I got the big win in Owensboro earlier in August. So I think we were all excited for that. And it just shows that, you know, this game can be a great trainer because, you know, some of the HRL drivers, um, the Hendersons are actually, have been hanging out with us as well since the GP got added and they got some time timing marks in the game at Gunnersville that they actually use to good effect. So the game is becoming 
not just a good sim, but a great trainer for these drivers to keep their skills sharp uh, during the off season. Yeah. Um, you know, funny story is before the, before the 2021 H1 season, like, like a couple of weeks before Gunnersville, I think it was, uh, uh, one of our racers and a friend of mine, Ben Dowell, who's on the U11 unlimited team, uh, just asked me out of the blue in discord, Hey, are the, uh, like timing mark, like, are the, is the buoy layout at Gunnersville accurate? Um, because he was, uh, using it to practice timing marks to relay to their driver, Jamie Nielsen, uh, which I thought was very cool. Mm -hmm. I think that is awesome. And we might see some of those drivers joining us more this season. I know Jimmy Shane will be down in division two. Jeff Bernard may join us during the season as well. So cannot wait to see how the drivers react to dealing with the real boat racer. And of course we've got, uh, Carson Kelly, son of J. Michael Kelly, who was in Division One, he's actually getting into some hydros later on this year and going into next season as he begins his quest to racing against dear old dad in H1 Unlimited, which we're all waiting for with bated breath. But it's an exciting time here, and I just can't wait to get this season started. Yeah, if I had to pick one driver to look out for up and coming in Division Two, Grant Liddyco, who's the son of Scott Ladycoat, who's a former unlimited driver and still races uh, in boards and Grant's gotten his own inboard experience. Now he's been driving the uh, T boat. He's, mm -hmm. he's pretty fast, at least compared to the rest of the D two fleet from what I've seen. So he'll definitely be one to watch during the season. Yep. <clears throat> can't wait to see him on the water, but. I can't wait to see everybody on the water, and I can't wait to call it. So you can watch the races starting October 8th on the newly rebranded Saturday Night Hydroplane League Facebook page. We will get started uh, 7.30 Eastern my time with the pre-race show. We will go racing at 8 Division 2, going racing at Chelan, the hunt for the golden tickets into Division 1. And before we go, DJ... I'm excited for how that season goes, but I don't think anything is going to top the utter drama we had in the final heat of San Diego in Division 2 last year. You know, you say that, but uh, I've learned through my years of watching real boat racing is just never underestimate the amount of chaos that can happen on the water. Uh, I mean, that's always the appeal of sports, right? Is just seeing what crazy storylines play out. And it can definitely happen even in the simulated world um so you you never know what sort of how it could come down to the wire all right dj thank you so much and enjoy uh, the rest of the off season we'll see you on the water uh next month yep thank you Dara. looking forward to it and uh hopefully i'll give some good victory interviews when i win <laughs> All right, so we will be right back here on the show. Thank you so much to DJ Miller for list, for uh, joining us. When we come back, we're going to get into Texas Motor Speedway, and uh, we thought the race was going to be normal, and then Texas decided to be Texas. Can we throw it in a bin, please? We'll be right back here on the Extra Mile here on iSports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. What's up, sports fans? Are you looking for the latest on Northern California sports? Then take a trip out west with me, your host, Gina G, on Reppin' the NorCal Sports, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. I'll be bringing it to you all the way live every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. And it's always a packed show. I'll bring you everything. Dynastic 49ers. The bite of the San Jose Sharks. Torture of the San Francisco Giants. The Golden State Warriors that we still believe. Then take you across the bay to the rise and grind of the Oakland A's. I've got you covered on college ball from the Cal Bears to the Stanford Cardinal, so that no matter what, 
Reppin' and NorCal Sports is always repping the bay. So if you bleed red and gold, or you're looking to keep an eye out west in them thar hills, don't miss me, Gina G, on Reppin' and NorCal Sports. Catch me every Monday at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern, and I'll have your fandom repped harder than a trio of Defenders Garden Stephen Curry before his buzzer beater is Gucci. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Davidson. It's your boy, Latarius Lock. And we are the hosts of Fast Break here on IE Sports Radio, where we discuss everything in the world of basketball from prep to the pros. You guys definitely check us out, man. Sunday, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. We got all the basketball information you guys need. So we look forward to you guys listening in. And please do, because we are the best basketball show on this side of the Mississippi. And please do check us out on Twitter at Fastbreak ISR. D Lock, where's our time again? 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That gives you guys plenty of time on a Sunday. Tune in. Sports fans, do you like teams that are tough, cities that are tougher, and fan bases that are passionate about their teams? How about teams that are historic and stadiums that are iconic? Then you belong in Chicago, and you need to check out Chi Town Weekly. Join me, Adam Kernan, every week as we keep up with all things Chicago sports. Bears, Bulls, Blackhawks. Cubs, White Sox, we'll cover them all plus more. The Windy City is always buzzing, and we'll keep you up on all the big games and major stories. So tune in to Chi Town Weekly every week right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And we are back here on the Extra Mile on High Sports Radio. Your right feed for all that is sports. Gerard Kinsey Jr. and Michael Ward here with you this evening. No Chris this evening, but he'll be chiming in probably on the text line. Always watching the Cincinnati Bengals uh, tonight. Hopefully Joe Burrow isn't getting killed by that absolutely awful offensive line that the Bengals apparently spent $70 million on, but I'm going to keep it a buck. I don't see it. So, mm-hmm. this isn't much of a football show, but I would say protect your investment. Uh, NASCAR's going to need to do a little bit of that as well because uh, William Byron, or not William Byron, sorry, Alex Bowman out for Talladega with a concussion from Texas. And we're going to get into that race here, and we will start with that n- unfortunate news. Uh, that is the second concussion linked to this car. Uh, the next gen car. I am not going <laughs> full out. The car is dangerous, like Twitter is. I know there was a certain YouTuber that released a video today talking about the drivers should strike. Folks, 
but I know who you're talking about. Touch grass. For the love of all that is good, touch grass. Y'all are losing your minds over stuff that is not that serious. Please calm down. But seriously, NASCAR has issues uh, with this car that there need to be addressed, of course. One is the fire issue. The other, of course, is the fact that, looking at it, Michael, the rear crash structure just might be too stiff. It looks like it because I've noticed a lot of these crashes or concussions rather uh, happen when the car impacts from the rear. Yeah. So you you're, you're possibly right. It might be um, the rear just has you know bad shock absorption. Because well, Bubba t- Bubba talked right? about it as well at Daytona where he basically said getting <clears throat> hit in rear in the car sucks. Yeah, and if you look, a lot of drivers, uh, especially Cody Ware, if you think about it, when he hit from the front. Uh, mm-hmm. He was okay, but when uh, Bowman hit from the rear, he you know he had a concuss- concussion. So it's got to be something specifically in the rear of the car. That's the issue. Yeah, it, it's got to be something in the rear, and they <laughs> will have definitely have to look at it because th- this can't keep going. I mean, Alex Bowman at this point is now in a must-win situation to try and move on in the playoffs. As we look at <laughs> the points, he will... He was 26 down beforehand mm-hmm. going into Talladega. He's going to be even more so back because obviously he's not going to race, and there's no guarantee, see Kurt Busch, that Alex Bowman comes back this year. So he could be done for the remainder of the season, and that so, would be a terrible way for his championship to end. So my question with that is, like, if um, let's just say his replacement – uh, goes into Talladega, fun, funny, funny enough, manages to win. Does he still get in the playoffs or? No, he does not. Oh, wow. <clears throat> so he will unfortunately miss the playoffs. I mean, the car will continue in the owner's championship, kind of like what's going on with Kurt Busch, but Alex will no longer be in the driver's championship, which would completely suck for him, given that, he got the car there now will be unable to fight for a chance at a championship. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's a terrible way to end a championship fight. If you think about it. Yeah, it is. And it just goes back to, you know, this car will have to be worked on. NASCAR is not stupid. Like they're not going to make changes the next week for something like this. It, it's going to take a, deeper redesign of the rear crash structures that probably won't be until 2023. We will see some changes on the, during the off season to this car. I imagine, I imagine we would have seen them anyway, but the other issue of course, with these cars is the tires and Rodney Childers actually came out on Twitter and explained why there's so many tire failures. It's not because Goodyear can't make a, good race tire which is the default complaint anytime a tire blows in nascar like we haven't seen 3400 pound stock cars blow tires since i've been alive yeah i've been i've been hearing a lot about oh it's the tire oh it's the tire and i was like you know the years before then there wasn't really the tire before now it's you know now people are coming out saying oh yeah it's the tire and i'm like well, it can't be the tire because previous years we have that problem. A- a- again, it must be something to do with the car or, you know, maybe it was the track in general. Well, apparently it's the way they are setting up the cars to get the diffuser to work because NASCAR instituted some rules <clears throat> in the shocks. They cannot pin the front to um, stop them from pinning the front. Uh, splitter to the ground they've been running lower air pressures in the back in the rear tires that's why we've been seeing instead of a lot of front (laughs) rights and lefts blowing a lot of rear rights and lefts blowing because they've been running much lower pressures in the rear to get the diffuser to work related to the front which makes it sound like it's more user error and less Goodyear can't make a race tire, which, by the way, they can. They give the teams the 
recommended pressures to run in the tires. You know what the teams do? They ball it up and they toss it in the trash because they don't use it and then wonder why the tires are blowing. So it's just that they could they could have prevented it, but they got to make the diffuser work. And, you know, it just led to the event that happened uh, last weekend, which was really unfortunate. A lot of drivers who were leading uh, ended up spinning out or something happened. Yeah, I was listening to that race in the car on the way home. I was at a little work event, so I didn't really get to watch much of this race. But it just seems like from what we were listening to on the PRN broadcast, someone would get the lead, they'd go for 30 laps, and then the tire would blow out. Yeah. Go lead for like a couple laps and then up there around. It started getting funny because I'm like, oh, man. Uh... Harvick's in the lead. Up, he spun out. Uh, who else was it? Uh, Truex. Man, Truex, had, Truex was having a year to forget, honestly. Mm-hmm. Uh, he spun out. Uh, Reddick got the lead, and, you know, he managed to, of course, a lot of you guys may know Reddick finished the race and, let, and won, but uh, you can't imagine that last few laps was stressful for him. It's a good race for Tyler Reddick to pick up the win there. And, of course, Michael, that just continues a streak <laughs> of we don't have anybody that's a playoff driver. We that is one playoff. yet as Joy Logano finished second. And, wait, is this is this right? Justin Haley finished third? Yes, Justin Haley had finished third. What? Yes. The 2022 NASCAR season, everybody. Uh, (laughs) Justin Haley, who has done next to nothing all year, finishes third. That just shows how chaotic this Texas race was. But chaos doesn't equal good all the time. And honestly, Michael, from what what I'm seeing, this is one of those races where chaos was... This was the bad chaos, if that makes sense, where... You just want it to be over at at the uh, as we got closer to the end. Yeah, I was just hoping that uh, the eight would just make it make it to the finish line. Honestly, because it was just such a weird race, just a lot of. And did you? And of course, you may have noticed, but at some point, drivers started running out of tires. I think. Yeah, because you had so many pit stops and folks were changing tires that they ran out, which and- is not something we would have even thought of before. Yeah, I was just like, has this happened in a NASCAR race before where every team has legit run out of tires to use? Not recently. Yeah, so you had people trying to stay out to finish and they could barely make it. I think drivers were getting flats trying to cross the finish line. This race was in, this race was insane, honestly. Yeah, and we'll see how it uh, continues going forward because we got Talladega coming up, and we're gonna we're definitely gonna have some issues at Dega because we've got twelve drivers that don't have a champion or that aren't locked into the championship. Somebody's got to go and lock themselves in before we get to, of course, the Roval where you don't want to be trying to win your way in there, there's going to be some bad <laughs> blocks thrown, and I think this is going to be the perfect recipe for yet another non-playoff driver to win this weekend. Yeah, I mean, shoot, what if it happens again? What if we get a, another playoff driver, not non, I'm sorry, non-playoff driver winning, and, you know, it leaves a... a a season regular up there that's just been out there winning, and now he can't get into the playoffs. Like, look, look at Chase Elliott. He's like plus four in. You know, what if he gets it, taken out of Dega and he, he's out? By the way, can we talk about Chase Elliott for a minute? I have never seen a driver in this playoff era fumble the bag <laughs> when it comes to playoff points like Chase Elliott did. He has had he had 40 extra playoff points 
going into this season, and he is or going into the playoffs, he has tested that margin <laughs> in both playoff rounds so far. Yeah, it's not been a great playoffs for him, and he, and he may get eliminated at Talladega. It's not out of the it's not out of the question. If the number one driver in the playoffs <clears throat> doesn't even make it to the round of eight in it's 2022. Gonna, it's going to be Kevin Harvick all over again. It is, and that's just going to show you in the 2022 NASCAR season, nobody was safe. Nobody. Absolutely was safe. nobody. This will go down in NASCAR history as the season where nobody was safe. If if it wasn't for the car issues, this season would go down next to the 2002 season as one of the greatest of all time. I really believe that because never in since then it has been very hard to have a season where you didn't know who was going to win. And this season, there you just have no idea who is going to pick up wins when we go to these <laughs> tracks on the weekend. Yeah, it's it's really just a coin toss, honestly, when we play nearest to win. Yeah. That coin toss has gone my way uh, for the most part. So we're getting close down to the championship. Got to get another update from uh, Mr. Matt White as we get down to the brass tacks of things. But it's it just, I, I have no idea who's going to win the championship. I we could don't. be in a situation where the driver at Phoenix wins the championship and doesn't win the race. Yeah, what if that happens? Yep. It's going to be crazy. And we know Texas has some work that needs to be done to it. They are talking about reconfiguring it. Drivers do not want it reconfigured as a super speedway. The drivers get a lot more vocal about what they want to see out of NASCAR, which I'm glad for. Um, I know what we want it reconfigured as, but other than a Walmart... Turn it uh, down. Michael, what do you want to see them do with the Tear it Texas down and build line? a shopping mall. I'm just kidding. Um, I was going to say a road course, but uh, short track? Texas, Texas short track? I don't know. Uh, here's my thing. Make it the world's biggest Walmart and call it a day. Oh my god. I, I'm, d- I'm done. I, I, I'm done <clears throat> with Texas. I'm sorry. Run both races at Coda. I can't do it. Th- this track can, uh, it needs to be retired. I'm sorry. I understand that, Daryl. I'd, I'd hate to see it go, but. I wouldn't. <laughs> you you and Monica, Texas and Monica are just tracks you would not mind seeing get to Monica. Let me tell you, if we get in, if there's a Formula One schedule that comes up, if Monaco is not on it, I'm going to be doing the gritty on t- on TikTok. I'm going <laughs> to throw that out there. Okay, like, I'm so, going to be uh, so happy to see that track go. So away. Liberty Mutual, um, I'm going to need you to make that happen. Oh goodness, because I, I need to see Daryl do the gritty on TikTok. Liberty Media is what you meant. It's going to be the worst gritty ever. But <sighs> so a couple of interesting <laughs> tweets have come out tonight. Uh, from Denny Hamlin and Kevin Harvick, and then we'll take another break here soon. Uh, Denny Hamlin, pretty disappointing that our sanctioning body refuses to acknowledge or accept any responsibility for drivers getting hurt. It's the same they said. We, and this is in caps, knew better. It's wrong these drivers it's wrong. These drivers continue to get taken advantage of by the system. Uh, Kevin Harvick as well. Uh, completely unacceptable that those in charge have let it get to this point. I remember it like it was yesterday, Denny Hamlin, the presentation of the new car to the drivers, pleading that the car was too stiff. Data didn't agree. Time to listen to the drivers crashing them in all caps. These veterans are going to lead a revolt if NASCAR doesn't fix this car. Yeah, they are. They're, they're going to lead a revolt, and uh, it might not be pretty if it happens. No. Also, are we going to talk about the uh, the 1124 situation? Oh, yeah, yeah, let's get in let's get into that. Uh William Byron uh got fined and kind of cost himself some playoff points as well or playoff standings. Uh William H- Byron and Denny Hamlin got into <laughs> it. 
uh, during the race, as drivers often do. When a caution came out, Byron spins Denny Hamlin under caution. NASCAR ended up missing it. On how I don't know, it was on the front stretch. He later admitted to wrecking Denny Hamlin under caution. That landed uh, Mr. Willie B a points penalty and a fine. Lost twenty five points. He is now eight points out of the playoffs during the round of eight going into Talladega. But that wasn't it. Ty Gibbs ran into Ty Gill. Uh, I think it was Austin Dillon, sorry, on the on pit road after he believed Dillon ran into him on purpose and then drew the ire of Eric Jones for bumping him under caution for Eric end up making a 3 a.m. tweet talking about don't ever hit me under yellow again, which I'm sorry, Eric Jones, you don't have enough wins or championships to begin that buck with anybody, my friend, but. Which one of these do you think was worse? I have the idea of which one is worse. And then I'm going to talk about the one NASCAR Twitter thinks it's worse. So the one I think is worse was definitely the one on the pit road. Mm -hmm. Because somebody could have got hurt with uh, Gibbs' dangerous driving. Mm -hmm. The one I think NASCAR Twitter is upset is uh, the Hamlin-Byron situation. No, they're just pretty much upset about Ty Dillon, or not Ty Dillon, Ty Gibbs in general. And look, I'm not going to defend what happened on pit road because you don't play around on pit road. The Eric Jones contact was such a non-issue. And people get mad at Ty Gibbs because he's cocky and he runs into people. What the heck does that make Noah Gregson? How many people have Noah gotten to a fight with? And y'all love that guy. You just say, well, he races like they used to back in the old days. You can't have it both ways. And that's my problem with NASCAR Twitter. You praise one driver and then you demonize another driver and they're doing the same thing. And I'm sorry, I'm going to say it again about Ty Gibbs. It's not his fault what his last name is. Get over it. Like, I am so tired of people bashing Ty Gibbs for stuff other drivers have done in the past. That we have praised drivers in the past. Kyle Busch took Ron Hornaday out of a championship a few years back in the truck series, and people still defend Kyle to this day. Like, y'all have just got to get over it. And when Ty Gibbs wins this Xfinity Series championship, I'm just going to sit back and laugh and drink the tears out this water bottle. (sighs) I will now get off my soapbox. But anyway, the (laughs) William Byron, Denny Hamlin situation was just so strange because A, NASCAR missed it, and then... William Byron admits to doing it, which, Willie, you don't do that. Yeah, I'm surprised he just admitted it. Because even Dale Jr. In the, in the booth was just like, well, he could say, oh, I was looking at my gauges or something like that. He could just deny it. I mean, and once you admit happened. it, they got to penalize you at that point. So he could have really just said nothing and got away with it. But unfortunately, he admitted to it, and now he's spun around, or ne- and now he's got to go yet again, must win into the playoffs. All 12 of them are basically in must win, or they're going to get locked in. But at this point, Michael, I- I- I'm not even going to ask, do we think there's going to be a big one? How big is the big one going to be at Dega? Mm. Depends on when it happens, man. Depends on when it happens. <laughs> If it's, I'm gonna go, late, if it's a late race, oh man, good luck. I'm going over under 15 cars finish on track. And how I'm many? Gonna take, I'm going to take the under on that. I think this is going to just be a crash fest. How many playoff drivers you think is going to get in it? Uh, Yes. 
Yeah, <laughs> the answer is yes. Yeah. It's gonna yeah. be a lot of playoff drivers, a lot of playoff implications. I might I might just say screw Singapore and watch this race, to be honest with you. Well, Singapore is gonna be at like two in the morning, so Oh yeah, I would definitely say screw this race. Also, it's I'm not gonna say Singapore is a bad track, but it's it's not the greatest. It's not awful, but it's not great. And we'll talk about Singapore in just a moment as we get ready to take another break, folks. Make sure you get on the iSports Radio Patreon. $5 a month gets you a shout-out on all 32 of our shows. And increased tiers give you extra goodies like merchandise, access to the podcasting university, and a chance to be on our flagship show, The Defining Moment, iSportsRadio.com. Hit that Patreon link and get your uh, support in. And thank you so much for continuing to make iSports Radio your direct feed for all. That is sports, and of course, I want to thank our <coughs> Patreons, Bay Area Raised, and Most Great, Key to the Gate, and an anonymous Patreon user. We'll be right back after this, here on the Extra Mile I Sports Radio, your direct feed for all. That is sports. sports fans do you like wine well we've got the show for you this is let's wine about sports a show where we talk about wine and sports simultaneously from the classic cabernet sauvignon all the way down to the grapes that you've never even heard of before oh yeah we cover it all and we'll talk about a little bit of sports as well football hockey collegiate women's sports it doesn't matter we're going to talk about it all and we're going to whine about it all So join me Monday at 8 p.m. on IU Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. And we're back here on Extra Mile I Sports Radio. Your direct feed for all that is sports. Daryl and Michael here with you this evening. Going to get into our final segment. We'll be going past the 9 o'clock hour this week as we've got a little bit of extra lead time now with Bay. I'm sorry, the Bayou Bulletin moving in onto Sundays. And while we're sitting here, we do want to give our thoughts out to everybody living in Florida right now with Hurricane Ian just going through. Uh, Arthur, I know, is out there. In Florida, we're thinking about you. We're thinking about all the folks out there in the great state of Florida as that hurricane came crashing through. And just be safe and please, please, please stay away from any standing water. You don't know what's in it. You don't know how deep it is. So please I, be safe. I've seen a shark swimming in a neighborhood. Mm-hmm. It's, it's I did crazy. see that. That's crazy. So we now have all of the hypercars. 
that will be in the WEC season next year all lined up as WEC announced on their Facebook <coughs> who the manufacturers will be. And we will have Toyota, Porsche, Peugeot, Cadillac, Ferrari, and Glickenhaus going at it in the 2023 hypercar class. Michael, I am excited. I am most excited to see the Cadillac back. I know there's a lot of unfinished business for the Caddies after what happened in 2002 when they went to Le Mans. So a lot of unfinished business for them. Which hypercar are you the most excited for? All of them. <laughs> there is no bias at all. All of, all of them. Yeah. And of course, we've got some extra ones that are going to be here in America with Acura and BMW. Going to be racing their GTP programs, which is the American class designation for hypercar. I'm hoping we will see Toyota in some capacity at some point over here, maybe with a customer car. But until then, still going to be an exciting time for sports car racing in America and abroad. Yep, I can't wait. I've been waiting for this season for so long. Yep. And next year, the 100th Le Mans 24 will be going. <coughs> that is going to be a race you do not want to miss, whether you're going or going to be watching on TV. Make sure you're somewhere to watch that race. These cars are going to put on quite a show. They still have a championship to finish up as Alpine and Toyota will lock up one last time in November in Bahrain to decide who's going to be the hypercar champion there. But going to be a fun class in all the categories of WEC because you know the GT cars always put on a fight. And it will be fun to see how those goes. It'll be the last year of GT Amateur that will run over there as GT Pro saying goodbye this year. And then we will move on and have the GT3 cars take up the Endurance GT categories of the World Endurance Championship. Yes, sir. Yes, sir me fun cannot wait and as we get into speaking of getting into the season we have to finish up of course this season and of course we're going into formula one and we're going to singapore in just (coughs) actually this weekend we'll be in the singapore grand prix it will be late saturday night as we get ready for racing there first opportunity for Max Verstappen to clinch the championship mathematically. Now, obviously, it might be difficult for that to happen, but I honestly think it is possible that Max Verstappen walks out of Singapore the champion. As we know, Checo has not been on pace. Checo has to finish fourth, and Leclerc has to finish no better than eighth for Max to link up the championship if he wins. Uh, Ferrari could very easily Ferrari up the strategy and have Leclerc finish eighth. Checo has not been that strong. He could finish below fourth. I really think it's a real possibility Max Verstappen locks up the championship now. Yeah, it's a possibility. And honestly, uh, if he does, great. It'll mean the season's over. (laughs) I don't have to worry about it anymore. And unfortunately, that has pretty much been how... The playoffs have, are not playoffs, sorry, but that's pretty much how the season has gone in Formula 1 the last few years, where it's just the championship is decided long before we get to Abu Dhabi. Now, last year it got decided when we were at Abu Dhabi, and, well, we saw what happened there. Yeah. But, you know, let's bury that in the dirt. Um, this season could potentially, well, yeah, it's going to be handled sooner rather than later. I'm glad it's over. Um, hopefully next year will be more exciting if Mercedes can, uh, do something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, next year will be great. Uh, Singapore. Uh, how do we feel about Singapore as just as a track? I like it. 
Yeah, it's, um, it's not bad. It's, it's not the, a bad track. It's one of the better street courses we have, so I think it's going to be a fun show, uh, depending on what we see. But going forward into that race, I know we had Spingate there, but it's been a lot of fun to see them rocking around Singapore, and it's been a while since we've been there, so I am will be very glad to see us finally back yeah. in Singapore tonight. Singapore, I'll probably, I'm sorry, Singapore was one of those races that made me wish there was more F1 races that take plus at night. Mm-hmm. We've got but, a few more night races because of that, too. Yeah. So yeah, Singapore is going to be a fun, fun track to watch. Yep. Even though we won't be awake for, I, I won't be awake for yeah, I'm, I'm, most I'm, of it. I'm going to have to like sleep that Talladega race off. Yep. And as we are getting ready for the season, or I mean, as we're getting ready to say goodbye to the 2022 season, everyone's talking about 2023 season and where certain drivers are going. The question now is where will or where will Mick Schumacher go in this equation as we do not have yet a confirmed seat for him it looks like he's going to be leaving Haas to go somewhere else uh we thought he was going to be going to or we thought he'd be going to Alpine but that deal may have fall through uh fallen through so now it's really a question of where does Mick end up? Um, that's a good question. You know, I feel like Mick Mick has only been in there two years, and I feel like those two years he hasn't really been able to shine. And that's kind of mm-hmm. the downside of Formula One. It's like sometimes you're not given enough time to honestly shine as a driver. Yes. And unfortunately, that's what happened to him. Um, now when it comes to where he goes, I feel like a lot of seats could be closing up. Um, I know that Gasly and Sonoda at Alphatari are still, you know, that's still their plan, but I, I keep hearing that Ocon can honestly say, you know, screw this and go to Alpine. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Ocon's so, at Alpine. Uh, not Ocon. Uh, get uh, Gasly. Mm-hmm. And I, there's still a situation of Ricardo. There's a lot of things that can happen. One of the things I think could happen is uh, Schumacher is out of F1, but they take him out of F1 and put him in the Ferrari hypercar program. That would be interesting to see how he does over there. I think it'd be fun to see him get a chance to drive one of those. And then he can come back. We'll see what Ferrari will decide to do. I would like to see him back. And I'd like to see Mick get a chance at a car higher up the grid than what he's been in because that Haas has just not been good. Well, it's been been better than what it was last year. Yeah. But... That's not... Go ahead. Surprisingly, that is saying much. But uh, I think he, I think that's what's going to happen to him. I think it's, he's going to go to the Ferrari hypercar program, and I think he's going to go there, uh, race, hone his skills a lot more, and come back a, a bigger, better Schumacher. Or he can bring the Schumacher name. He can make the Schumacher name a legendary in another. Uh, Another racing category. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Got a lot of time before we decide <laughs> what the final 2023 grid is going to be. And I think we're all excited to see which drivers end up where. But time to get ready for nearest the win. Got Talladega, and we have Singapore coming up this weekend. I'm going to surprisingly. Take Checo for this weekend in Singapore and for NASCAR. Well, I have no idea who's going to win this race, but I can't go wrong with Bubba Wallace at a restrictor plate track. He's going to be up there near the end of it, and I think he picks up the win in Dega. Michael, who you got? 
Um, I'm for Singapore. Um, I'm gonna go with science. Mm-hmm. Um, and and uh, Dega. Who man? Who can you pick at Dega? Honestly, uh, everybody. Honestly. <laughs> shoot. Um, I don't really know who to pick at Dega. Um. I think who's good at super points. I don't want to. I don't want to vote Wallace because that might jinx him. I'm going to go with. I'm just gonna hands up. I'm just gonna go Joey Logano. Okay. All right. I don't really know who else to pick, honestly. But yeah, I'm gonna just go him. Yep, and if you got a picks on who you think is going to win, hashtag nearest to win before the season starts on Twitter. We will get you into the standings. But, folks, it is time for us to say goodbye for this edition of The Extra Mile. Remember, if you missed any episode of any iSports radio show, you can catch it wherever podcasts can be heard. And remember, I'm at DK Junior 12. Michael's at Michael, score, or Michael underscore war 25 for Twitter. Make sure you keep it locked to all where iSports Radio pages on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and of course, now <laughs> TikTok. We've been having some fun over there on iSports Radio TikTok. Make sure you check it out. But it's time for us to say goodbye for the extra mile. For Michael, I'm Daryl. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you at the next green flag. Good night, everybody. Mm-hmm.